hello student uh, welcome to uh, this topic uh, uh, this is the atmospheric extinction and uh, here this is the earth in this figure this shows uh, the the earth and uh, this is the north pole and this is the south pole of the earth and uh, this is the circle which is passing through the equator the earth's equator is like this so from the center of the earth exactly uh, over the equator a point can be considered and that is called as the zenith and on other side of this zenith exactly in opposite side uh, another point you can consider uh, so that is called as the nadir and uh, this point uh, h is uh, is called as the horizon because uh, suppose if you are standing here near the near the zenith uh, what happens in the morning time the sun rises here the sun looks like uh, it rises from the point h so such a point is called as the horizon and uh, this is all about uh, zenith and uh, nadir and now we'll see what is the uh, what is this atmospheric uh, extension so intensity of uh, starlight is reduced by passing through the earth's atmosphere due to scattering and uh, absorption by air molecules and uh, and aerosols which includes uh, dust particles raindrops ice crystals etc so this is called as the atmospheric extinction that means uh, the intensity of light coming from coming from the star gets reduced because of uh, these reasons because earth is having its own atmosphere which extends up to 500 kilometers so different layers of uh, atmosphere are there and if uh, suppose uh, uh, an observer is standing on the earth surface uh, uh, when the light from a star reaches the observer it has to pass through the different layers of uh, atmosphere of the earth so when the light passes through the different layers of atmosphere of the uh, earth uh, it undergoes uh, scattering phenomena and it also uh, and the light energy is absorbed by different kinds of air molecules and because of this reason the intensity of a uh, light goes down and this is called as the extinction of a uh, light so uh, this uh, atmospheric extinction increases with the uh, increasing zenith distance of the star so what happens uh, that means uh, suppose if the distance between the star and uh, the earth is very very high very large then whatever the di distance is there uh, or the line connecting the uh, star and earth uh, that is called as the zenith distance so here the zenith uh, distance and uh, there will be more extinction not only the earth atmosphere there may be the atmosphere of some other planets or some other stars in between that may also uh, absorb the light energy and uh, it uh, leading to the reduction of the light in intensity so that is not actually uh, known when we are uh, measuring the intensity of starlight on the surface of the earth so hence the star looks quite faint uh, near the horizon as compared to uh, its uh, brightness uh, near the zenith so you see morning when the sun you suppose if you are standing here in the zenith uh, sun rises here when you look at the sun during the morning time it, it it seems to be faint and its color and uh, uh, its color is uh, reddish and why what is the reason for that is that uh, uh, because uh, when you are at the zenith uh, and when the sun rises here 
the light rays from the sun has to pass through the so many different atmospheric layers and dust particles all those things uh, because of that reason extinction is more and hence uh, the intensity of the sunlight is also less in the morning time so but uh, suppose if uh, the the sun is uh, suppose if you are uh, uh, in the zenith at noon exactly so sun is over your uh, over uh, your head so at that time uh, ultimately the sun's uh, brightness is very very high and because of that reason the sunlight uh, is also high so here i have shown the two diagrams and uh, in this diagram this is the zenith i mean height and this is the incoming uh, light ray maybe from a sun or some other stars and this i not is the intensity of light uh, and actually i have shown here the atmosphere this is the earth atmosphere so i not is the intensity of the light before entering into the atmosphere and i is the intensity of uh, light near this earth surface uh, uh when it enters the atmosphere and the angle between this zenith or the height and the direction of light is called as the zenith angle and uh, for this atmosphere let us i have taken uh, dh is the uh, dh is the uh, this uh, height and this ds is the light travels from this point to this point and this is one case this is another case uh, in figure b uh, where we have uh, uh, and here we, have, we assume that uh, uh, the earth atmosphere are uh, plane they are parallel but here uh, we assume that uh, the earth atmosphere are uh, are of uh, uh, curved ones so two two cases we have to consider and uh, the angle between the height and the direction of the incoming radiation is called the zenith angle if the zenith angle is not too large suppose uh, this z is a smaller one we can approximate the atmosphere uh, by plane uh, uh, parallel stratified la layers that means when the zenith angle is a smaller one we can approximate that uh, the atmospheric uh, uh layers are parallel to each other and in which uh, all quantities like temperature pressure absorption coefficient depends on a uh, uh, height only so hmm, if that is the case uh, uh, these quantities temperature pressure and uh, absorption coefficient depends on the height only then if i not is the in uh, intensity of the incoming uh, light uh, outside the earth's atmosphere and i is the intensity uh, of the light ray near the earth's surface uh, uh, where it is received uh, by an uh, telescope as shown in the figure a uh, we can write uh, for this situation as uh, i is equal to i not into exponential of minus integral of uh, k rho into ds so in this equation this k represents the extinction coefficient and rho is the density and ds is the geometrical distance <clears throat> diametrical distance means there is a distance uh, between the observer, uh, observer and uh, uh, and the and the point where you have considered in the atmosphere uh, from diagram sec z Uh, is equal to ds by dh so this diagram you can see um, so this uh, the second z the second of the zenith angle we are taking so uh, actually second theta means it is a reciprocal of cos theta cos theta is a uh, adjacent side divided by hypotenuse uh, but uh, uh, second uh, z is uh, the reciprocal of that that means uh, hypotenuse divided by adjacent side so it becomes ds divided by dh second of z is equal to ds divided by dh in this diagram i have taken this much as a ds actually i have written here it's wrong 
so this much is ds and uh, this much is uh, dh so coming back to this point uh, from the diagram uh, i uh, i show that uh, second z is equal to ds by dh or ds is equal to dh into sec of z substituting the value of this ds into equation 1 we get uh, i is equal to i naught exponential of minus integral of k rho ds was there in place of ds you are substituting dh second of z so this is equal to i naught exponential of uh, minus uh, sec z um, into multiplied by integral of k rho into dh or uh, i write this as i naught exponential of minus alpha into sec of z where alpha is equal to integral of k rho dh so take uh, this as the equation 2 and uh, at a uh, large uh, larger value of the zenith distance this angle, zenith angle will be greater than or is equal to 60 degree. When the zenith angle is more than, uh, we have to, we can't approximate the atmospheric layer as a, a parallel ray layers. Uh, we'll have to think that uh, these atmospheric layers are a curved one. So this is the that case. So we must take into account uh, the curvature of the atmosphere as shown in the figure B, I told, uh, then uh, uh, sec z is replaced by x which is the ratio of uh, air mass traversed at the given z to the air mass uh, traversed at z is equal to 0. So suppose if m and a small uh, m naught are the magnitudes of the star at the surface and uh, outside the atmosphere respectively. So these are this, remember these are the small m, so that means uh, these are the apparent magnitudes of a star. And uh, you think that uh, suppose uh, F, uh, m and m naught are the magnitudes, means apparent magnitudes uh, of the star at the surface and outside the atmosphere respectively, then we write using our earlier derivation in the last so in the in the, in the last class i have derived the other equation that is m minus uh, m1 minus m2 is equal to minus 2.5 into log of uh, l uh, l1 by l2 or log of uh, f1 by f2 two equations we have derived uh, where f1 and f2 were the uh, radiant fluxes and l1 and l2 were the luminosities using the same manner we i am writing this equation as m is uh, m minus m naught is equal to minus 2.5 log of i y i naught so here in place of f1 by f2 the intensities are there i by i naught so uh, next uh, uh, this is equal to minus 2.5 log of uh, uh, you, you can put the value of this uh, i by i naught uh, from equation 2 uh, which is exponential of minus alpha into x and go on simplifying this equation or m is equal to m naught you take this m naught to the rhs so it becomes m is equal to m naught minus 2.5 log of uh, exponential of minus alpha x is there you you can that uh, write as uh, yes, a uh, 1 divided by e raised to alpha x because the negative sign is that then this is equal to m naught plus 2.5 log of uh, e to the power alpha x you can uh, because if you are uh, reversing the de denominator and numerator here and uh, this uh, sign of this uh, 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 arithmetical symbol changes so uh, now you have taken this quantity to the numerators that is why it becomes plus uh, so therefore m is equal to m naught plus 2.5 log of uh, e raised to alpha x or you can write uh, this equation as uh, m is equal to m naught plus 2.5 uh, alpha x into log e using the logarithmic rules 
or uh, you can write uh, this equation as m is equal to m naught uh, plus beta into x uh, where uh, beta is equal to 2.5 log of 2.5 alpha into log e so this quantity except yes uh, uh, all the three quantities are taken as a, a beta so in equation 3 equation 3 is a, a straight line this equation 3 is a straight line a plot of uh, m versus x is drawn and is shown in the figure so here we have plotted uh, m versus uh, x or second z uh, in this way so it is very clear that it is in a straight line and uh, intercept is m naught and the slope gives the beta so here the intercept of this straight line on the y axis is, is taken as m naught and uh, uh, this the slope of this straight line gives the beta which is uh, which is nothing but the extension coefficient so when uh, we compare the two stars uh, we have two equations that is m1 is equal to m01 plus beta into x1 and m2 is equal to m02 plus beta x2 so that you can take the difference of these two m02 minus m01 is equal to uh, m2 minus m1 minus beta into x2 minus x1 so from these two equations so you can write uh, in this way and this is written as delta m naught and this is written as delta m and minus beta into this is written as a delta x so this is the equation for where beta into delta x is referred as the differential extension and uh, next uh, the extension coefficient beta is also uh, the function of effective wavelength of the observation so that means up to this point up to this point we have not accounted for the wavelength of the uh, incoming light so suppose if you are accounting uh, the wavelength of the incoming light also then we have to write in different way so the extension coefficient beta is also the function of effective wavelength of observation so for the two stars observed uh, uh, with the different uh, wavelengths, then uh, the above equation is written as uh, m is equal to m naught plus uh, beta na, beta naught raised to lambda plus uh, b one raised to lambda c into x, where c is the color index uh, of the star one and uh, m naught and beta b b na b beta naught uh, are the are the are the parameters uh, related to the reference uh, star so it's all about uh, uh, atmospheric extinction and how it depends upon and uh, how it is obtained and what are the expressions for that uh, all we saw there and you just uh, go through it thanks for listening